Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And we've seen some pretty good moves, uh, not only in the um, equities that finally did go in and dial back down. We're looking for a move lower in equities. Uh, but we also saw gold um, make a pretty pretty decent move uh, lower. I'm actually going to go to that since that was such a huge move. Um, the move seemed like a stretch move, although it actually attained the target in barely 12 hours. And you can see here with the moving gold, um, when I posted the chart, I think we were right around here, 1945-ish, but it was, it was right here at 1950, I was looking at it. I think it was right here. And then as you can see, um, the way I came up with this uh, was that uh, of course we had a level here at 1875 and really my bigger concern was and I just happened to see that the fibs pretty much lined up was that my volume weighted average from the June 4th low you can see that right here I think it might be June 5th low but you can see right here came in at 1878 and then of course we had um, a um, level here at 1875 and then I looked at the 127% extension of this move right here, provided me 100, uh, 1877. And of course, uh, 1863 uh, was gonna be the 38% of this entire move down here. So we had some nice confluence, but really my, my main focus was really on the volume weighted average, uh, the VWAP off of the um, June 6 low. And you can see we came down there and hit it. And uh, essentially we fell uh, $70 or $75 only to turn around and rally back $70 right here. And we're up at some resistance here, uh, but that was you know, such a huge move in gold. Uh, it seemed at least initially like a bit of a stretch, but um, that it might, you know, I thought it would get there, but I thought it might get there after three, four days, something like that, maybe a little bit longer. I didn't think it'd do it in li literally just a little over 12 hours. Uh, also, I was looking for a move lower here in the NASDAQ. Uh, one of the things, and I, that's why I left the arrow here, and I was talking in the room, really almost till I was blue in the face, it kind of got old. Um, was uh, because of, as I mentioned to y'all yesterday, and I mentioned in the in the, in the webinar, saying uh, we kind of went over this whole thing. I was saying about you know how there is no, there had, despite Trump's executive orders, there was nothing to it, because it was well, just from the outset, you know, one could say it's unconstitutional because really only the Congress is the one that can spend money. But the thing is, it really had no teeth. There was nothing, it, it wasn't gonna go in and do anything with the evictions. It, it couldn't generate unemployment benefits. Um, and why well, I thought that potentially this thing was gonna turn around and roll over. And one of the reasons I also pointed in the room, but I, I, went, I actually mentioned that if you saw the, the uh, chat, basically mentioned it ad nauseum until very late in the day. I basically was just tired of talking about it and felt like, you know, I'm not even going to talk about it anymore. You know, if nobody wants to listen and forget it. But we did see the market then rotate lower. Uh, and what caused that, it was already, you could already see rallies were failing or run out of gas. But then what really gave it was when Mitch McConnell said, well, we're just at a stalemate. We're just, nothing's happening. And basically it brought everything to the forefront. Like you couldn't deny it. It was like, pulling the curtain from the Wizard of Oz, you, there was no denying at that point, and then the market just rolled over. It was already starting to slide back, and but one of the things I'd mentioned, I mentioned in the chat room too, is, is if we lose this area, you had two back-to-back, -back, you know, hammers, and we tried to rally back up, and it was, even though it was rallying, it would turn around and give it back up, then rally and start to slide back, and slide back. Once we did this, then the market really came under some pressure. We still have the door open, but we can move lower, but uh, you can see where we're at with already come away and potentially we can drop back, drop back down. And really my, we did actually, the odd thing is uh, looking at the VWAP, uh, actually, let me take a look here, 
actually caught the bottom, uh, not by myself, because I didn't go on and um, stick around that, uh, that length of time. I got out before we made this dip here, but I shared this on Twitter to also. As you look at the VWAP off of the June 26 low, and that was 18, uh, 10,855, and you could see the, the, the low was, I think, like 10,845, but the key was that it turned around and rallied right back off of that right before the close to close above 10,900, and you can see we kind of tested down here on the 878, and we've since moved higher here. And you can see the, the importance, really, of using VWAP uh, as well as using some good, solid technical levels, which, as I told you, pretty much that's what I base most of my stuff on is just trade the levels. And um, and then also I use, you know, VWAP. I also use Fibonacci, but I don't use RSI or any oscillators. I think you can pretty much see whatever's going to happen here. And if you follow closely enough, another thing is also why I had a lot of conviction on that move yesterday was because of what we've been seeing here uh, with the equities. And we ha and we even covered these before we wrapped up the day. And I was uh, wrapped up the session and I was referencing how, you know, not that the market was gonna fall apart, but it certainly was set up. We saw this close in Facebook on Friday. And we, and we talked about here with Netflix. You can see that we're breaking this big uh, daily trend line uh, that goes back. We're going to pull this for the back. You can see that. And we'd already broken it the day before. So it was really open for us to move lower. And you can see here we've moved down here to this 467. And basically it was multiple things that you're seeing that really, may, if you were following this close enough, really gave you the opportunity to sell this market multiple times. Um, so um, actually at the time, I actually got short on the way up. And actually I was underwater, but I hung on. And I'm glad I did hang on and got paid uh, nicely at the end of the day. I didn't want to stick around. Uh, I would have liked to have pressed it even further, uh, going all the way into that target. But since I had been down during the day and saw the market come back down, then rally back up, come back down, uh, I did kind of scalp around, but I said, no, I'm just kidding. And it was already getting late in the afternoon. I think it was already like a half hour before the market was going to close, maybe 20 minutes. I said, you know what? I don't want this thing to turn around and bounce right back up. Um, but still, once again, it was, it was uh, a good day, especially more importantly, was hanging out to convictions. And by seeing these stocks already turned lower, and then all of a sudden also – uh, knowing that uh, there wasn't nothing, it, it was a headline that I even put in the chat room where a, a gentleman who's a political reporter was saying, I don't see what the market's not seeing. Are they not aware that the Congress is not even in town? There's no deal on the table. There's nothing that can be done. And then finally, it was when uh, Senate Leader Mitch McConnell said, it's a stalemate. There's no, we're not making any progress. That's when the market turned around about a couple of, maybe a minute, two minutes later, that's when the bottom started coming out and it just started breaking lower and lower and lower. So anyway, that's where we're at. Um, bear with me. So my whole uh, thought process was on that was uh, not necessarily to go in and take any kind of a victory lap. Um, we all have our couple of moments here and there. But the thing was is that just to, you know, stick into good technicals. Uh, and to me, I don't use the same technicals as many others. As Blake likes to say, in many ways it's going to cap. But I kept the zero here, but I said, if we lose this, it really opens the door for us to move lower. And certainly we did, but you could see the market basically, you know, um, technically rolling over. But you could do there was different things you could look at here. I took some shorts up in here that you could see where the market was basically just like a uh, um, a big ocean liner starting to gently turn, gently turn. You can see right now we're coming up here to two-day VWAP, 
if we're looking at a um, an area where the market could run out of gas, let's get rid of this here. Can look at two different areas. There's the high up here. Thirty-eight percent would be eleven thousand twelve, and that eleven thousand nine is a pretty good resistance. And then if we look at yesterday's high, well, actually, more importantly, would be the you see this low, the rebound high, which would be there. That would carry more weight. We're at the thirty-eight percent is nine sixty-four, and this eleven thousand right there is going to be key. Right there, that's where everything started to roll over then. You see right here, that's going to carry some good weight right there, 11,000. And then, of course, um, if you look at here, 11,000 is also the two day VWAP. So you can see we're already above same day VWAP. So 11,000, I think that's going to be a good area. So we're going in this back. So that would be three. I didn't go long gold. I thought about going long gold. I I I haven't traded gold for a little while. Um, not that long ago, but I think it was like maybe three weeks ago or something. Um, but I just felt that the way gold was moving, and also was moving in one direction, really was in two-way moving, which is not the kind of market I like to trade in. But I wasn't sure how much further, but that was a good area. I guess I could have stepped in, but I didn't. Uh, would have been nice because we had pretty good rally off of that. So 11,003 here, good level. Get rid of this. And then you can see here, see right there, two-day VWAP puts it right there at 11,000. There we go. Well, I'd be looking to take a, sta uh, take a stab in here. And as I said, let's go... Hmm, 11,003, that's 50%. So 11,002 is a 50%, 11,000. Just a table, we'll mark it off. So you see the confluence here. You got. So you got eleven thousand here, which is a fifty percent of this move. You got eleven thousand three this level, 
and 11,001 is going to be the two-day VWAP. And you can see right here. There. See, there's the open. So that's going to be two-day VWAP. We're above same-day VWAP, so it opens the door for them to move up much higher. And 50%. Not, this market likes to rebound to 50%. I notice that of ranges, intraday ranges or short-term ranges. So there we go. Um, let's go on and take a look at the news. I mean, economic data. Let's, let's go and take a look at where gold is. Look at that. Wow, it's already up in 1950. Holy smokes. Thought it might take a, a pause here at 1944. That is one heck of a rebound. Look at that. The low was 1873, I think it was. 1877 is 127%. 1875 is the level. And 1878 is the two day is the uh, VWAP off of the uh, June, I think it's a June 4 low. Let's see. Look. Yeah, June, June, I think it's June 5th low or June 6th low, something like that. But you can see here. See how that low here? So how significant using VWAP is, or with you know, like anchored VWAP, so you can put it at a significant higher low. You see how important that was. Anyway, let's go on and pull in the economic news, and we'll move on. Oh, gone. We have a lot of data. Holy smokes. So we had UK GDP. Uh, they're looking for minus 21, came in uh, negative 20.4. Uh, manufacturing output 10% came in 11% a little bit better than expected. Construction output. Golly, there's a lot of data. Uh, GDP quarter over quarter, looking for negative 20.5% came in line pretty much. Italian consumer prices, something's kind of funny because we haven't even reached the uh, top of this next hour unless it's the time to change. Now, times haven't changed. I don't know why it's saying that. It's odd. Yeah, see, here it says four. But see, here's the here's four at the top of this hour, and that's industrial production. Years on industrial production. As we come to the states, we will have core CPI at eight thirty Eastern. That's about it. Let's go move this out of the way. Okay, so the New Zealand dollar slips as the RPNZ seeks to suck up more bonds. The New Zealand dollar slipped to a one-month low on Wednesday after the country's central bank surprised many by expanding its bond buying campaigning while warning it was actively considering cutting rates below zero. If you remember, we covered this news story uh, yesterday, and I actually showed it in the room earlier in the uh, in the U.S. session um, because I think Blake was making a reference, and I said hey, you need to read this story. And I was really the story I meant was more about the uh, the Aussie employment report because remember it was going to show before the data had come out because uh, it wasn't going to go, it wasn't going to encompass the the cutbacks or job losses because of, you know, the, uh, the lockdown in Victoria, in Victoria State in Australia. And so he read and said, oh, well, that's a good thing also on the RBNC. And they had mentioned that they're looking to expand that, that that might be an option it was a kiwi bank trader so anyway uh so that did play out was what they were looking for but once again the new zealand dollar slipped to one point flow on wednesday after the country's central bank surprised many although if you listened you weren't surprised surprised many by expanding its bond buying campaign while warning it was actively considering cutting rates below zero to support the economy the rbnz said it now planned to buy a hundred billion uh, government bonds up from uh, 60 uh, billion uh, Kiwi bond 
Kiwi dollars previously and extended the deadline purchase out to mid-2022. One of the thoughts was on that story was because they said uh, New Zealand had hardly had any COVID um, um, cases. And so it was doing much better than Australia, but that coming into this, the potential was that they could expand the bound bond program, which they did. And now we've seen the uh, it's slide. Look, we're starting to move up a little bit higher here. Seeing come up to this 11,000. So anyway, um, since the New Zealand dollar slipped, okay, so the, we still expect the bank to wait until next year before uh, bringing, uh, until bringing uh, the cash into the negative territory, though the risk now is that the bank moves sooner than later, and the Australian dollar hit its highest on the Kiwi since 2018. The Aussie fared well on a broadly firmer US dollar, and the official data showed annual wage growth slow to its record lows. One percentage of jobs uh, saw outright wage cuts, with the average wage reduction being a severe 13%. And let's go on and cover the dollar. The dollar inched ahead on Wednesday as jumps in the U.S. yields pushed it higher against the Japanese yen, while the Kiwi briefly hit a one-month low after the central bank extended its bond buying program. That triggered a wave of gold selling. Hmm. Oh, so we mentioned about the yields on 10-year yields, which rises when the bond prices hits, made its steepest gains in two months on Tuesday ahead of the largest ever 10-year auction later on Wednesday. So this is going to be key. Uh, that triggered a wave of gold selling, which deepened in Asia and has pressured the yen as better returns on U.S. debt lures the investment from zero yielding Japan. And let me see where the Japanese yen is at. Yes, yeah, 680. That was nothing. We're on our highs right now at 680 on dollar yen. The Aussie fell to 7120, while the New Zealand dollar fell half percent to 6547. Elsewhere in the financial markets, the focus was on a political holdup in Washington over a new stimulus package, which capped broader investment sentiment. Investors have been positioning themselves to buy back dollars they had sold against again, said Imizumi, uh, Chief Effect Strategist at Daiwa. So let's go on and move into the analysis. Wow, gold is still moving higher. Holy smokes, now 1955. Sheesh, what a rebound. Oh, my goodness. I sure am glad I didn't try and step in front of that thing because that looked like, you know, hey, 1944 is a pretty good rebound. Um, actually, we could take a look, quick fib on that. Nineteen fifty eight would be a nineteen fifty six is a thirty eight percent, which is we're just about there. It'll be interesting to see how it reacts. Um let's take a look into the year dollar. Let's try that. There we go. So the euro came pips from tagging the bias chart support at 1717, posting what could be an inverted hammer. 
but with U.S. rates potentially moving higher, a further down move is possible. Support on Wednesday will be 1665 with resistance at 1767. We're not too far away from 1767. Um, actually, you can see right there. That should be right there. It's actually should be 1770. So let's mark that for 1770. And I thought we might be pressing lower, but we're not rebounding. 1665. I guess that's why gold is also going higher because the dollar's weakening a bit. On to the cable. So cable took out stops above 31 even, only to fade at the end of the day. Support on Wednesday will be 29.87, with resistance at 30.88. And like I said, we're seeing the dollar get back some of these gains. I thought we might press a little bit lower. So 29.87. And if you look at the daily, you can see how we rallied up. We kind of went up, landed on a dud. That one might press a little bit lower, but not so far. Let's go and move into the Aussie dollar. The Aussie finally showed some signs of weakness for a correction. Wednesday's support will be 7087 with resistance at 7180. So 7087, 7180. And Let's go and move into the Kiwi. Kiwi spent Monday mired in a 40 pip trading range, no changes in support. Or resist. Oh, that's right. Um, we did have a dip back in here, which is 65.32. I mean, Blake had posted some um, news that was in regards to the RBNZ. So I didn't put the news for that. But let me see. We had 65. Yeah, here's we did get to the 65.32. And as far as the upside, would be right there, 66.25. Oh, there we go, 66.26. So fine, there we go. Uh, let's go move into the dollar cab. So the dollar cab tested the lower range, closing off the lows. Support will be 3287 with resistance at 3373. And let's go move into the dollar peso.
So the dunlop, the peso is stuck in concrete, no changes in support and resistance. And so, as we indicated here, no changes here. We're just stuck between 2220, we see down here, and 2258. Now, we've even tightened up even further here, so look. But we'll keep those in line. Moving on to the dolly in. So with the rise in US yields, the pair closed at bias chart resistance, which at the time was 647. Upside resistance for Wednesday will be 702 with support at 617. And moving into the dollar index. Mm, boy, we've turned around for this ninety three ninety one. Um, The dollar index appears poised for a higher run with the advent of higher use, uh, higher use rates. Bias chart resistance will be 94.35. Now we had 93.91 right here, but you can see that we were pressing And I thought we might be able to push beyond it, but we just ran out of gas at that 93.91. But we have moved up to 94.35 if we do move ahead, and the downside is going to be And on to the cross rates. We had sixty nine forty one, no changes there, and on the upside, seventy forty three, so no changes there. We have it came close, but we haven't gotten there, so uh, no changes here. We'll move into the Euro yen. The high we had on the upside was 25.20. We'll push beyond that. We're pushing this upper level here now. Uh, and the euro has kind of turned things around, just like when it looked like it was going to start to slide back. Let's go and take a look at the daily. So just like when it looked like the euro was going to slow down a bit, we'll add the gas to 25.52. You see right there, that ridge there, let's use that, which actually coincides with here. That ridge would be 2527. Or up here, which would be 25, 2553. So, hmm, we're almost there anyway. That was 2552. Uh, Right. 
It's called 2567 for resistance. Boy, they, this is pretty good, strong move. Look, it came up here, dip back down, and here we are, launch it again. That is strong. The uh, support's going to be right there, 24.63. On to the Euro on. Once again, the euro making some moves, and of course, with the Aussie week, I mean, there's the potential for this thing to move higher. The resistance at this point is going to be right there. Sixty-five, eleven, and support. Right there, sixty-four forty-two, and with the. Kiwi and the Aussie looking like they're in a, a mode where they can move lower. We're certainly pressing the upper side, and it's going to be resistance going to be right there, 80.25. Support. Yeah, I don't know if it'd make it all the way back here. So we're gonna put support right here, 79 even. On to the Aussian. Put it just a hair above, which is right there, 76.49 for the upside resistance. No support. Seventy-five seventy. And on to the guppy. Oh, we're scooting along here. Some decent support. I mean, volume coming in here. Oh, 39.73. 39.73. And support. Right here. Thirty-nine oh four. 
And lastly, let's wrap it up with the story nod. Look at volume running here. You see that coming across here, these touches? That is going to be 8336. With support coming in at right there, eighty two seventy one. And that'll do it here for the analysis, and I'll get that posted and we'll see you in the chat room and thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover.